which one is better suited to creating really realistic looking drawings. So what really are the differences between watercolour pencils and colour pencils? Because they do look very similar. But with watercolour pencils, I feel like they're a very overlooked medium. A lot of beginner artists just aren't sure how to go about using them and what really they're meant to be used for. So we'll take a closer look at that in this video to see if they can be used for realism. Whereas with colour pencils, they're a very common medium. A lot of people have got experience with them from a young age. So it's a lot easier to jump into using colour pencils and they are great for realism. You can see here that the watercolour pencil and colour pencil look very similar. So it's no wonder that so many artists are a bit confused as to what the difference between these two pencils are and what they should be used for. But there are a few fundamental differences between these two pencils which allow them to create different looks with your drawings. So let's start off by shading with these two pencils. And when you're shading with the pencils, they will look very similar. I'm first shading with a watercolour pencil and you can lay down a lot of the pigment, get really vibrant colours just like you would with coloured pencils. At this stage when you're using it in this way, just shading with the pencil on its own, you will get a very similar look. The watercolour pencil will look pretty much the same as the coloured pencil. It only is when it comes to the blending part of the drawing technique that you do see a big difference between the capabilities of these two supplies. So watercolour pencils are designed to be blended and activated with water and that is what gives them the look of watercolour paint. So once you've done your shading you can go in with some clean water on your brush and it just activates all the pigment and creates that watery look which will give your drawing more of a watercolour finish. Whereas you can't use water to blend colour pencil. And that is because colour pencils are either wax or oil based and wax and oil just simply doesn't mix with water. And so which is better out of these two supplies for realism? Let's find out. And we're actually going to start off with our watercolour pencils. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and draw the exact same thing with both supplies and just see which is easier to to use to get that realistic result and I'm going to go through the pros and cons of each supply and for this little study I'm just going to be drawing an eye which is as most of you probably know one of my favorite things to draw and I think it's a lot of artists favorite thing to draw. I'm starting out by sketching the basic shapes of the eye for each of these studies just using my HB mechanical pencil and I make sure to keep my sketch as light as I possibly can because I don't want these grey sketch lines of the graphite to actually show through my colour pencil and watercolour pencil shading especially when I'm using watercolour pencil and activate it with water I don't want these grey lines to show through so make sure that when you're doing your initial sketch you keep it as light as possible you just want to be able to barely see your sketch lines. So if it is a little bit dark, then you can go in with an eraser, something like a kneaded eraser is especially good just to lighten those sketch outlines back up so that they are barely visible. Now I'm going to go through how I actually created these really realistic looking eye studies with both watercolor pencils and color pencils. And you can actually see that even though I use completely different mediums and different pencil sets, the colours of these two drawings actually match very closely. And I know that matching colours and picking the best pencils for your drawing can be a real struggle for a lot of you. So I just want to remind you that I have got a free guide on how to go about picking the perfect colours for any drawing. I go through my strategies, my methods, so I'll leave a link to that at the top of the description. But let's get into the studies, starting with the watercolour pencils. 
and personally I haven't actually got a lot of experience working with watercolour pencils, I'm still fairly new at it. So when it comes to drawing realistically, I think I've only done about one drawing where I used this supply to create a realistic looking drawing. So I wasn't too sure how this would turn out and whether it would be easy or not to create a realistic looking eye using watercolour pencils. The only realistic drawing that I'd done was an animal, so a lot of fur and texture. I haven't created a skin tone before or done any portrait work using watercolour pencils. So for me, this was a challenge and I was really excited to see the result that I was going to get and to see if it would have been just as easy to get the results as it was with colour pencils or whether it's going to be difficult or whether it just wouldn't work at all and whether watercolour pencils just wouldn't be good for realism. But I started out doing what I would with colour pencils, just going in and building up my layers of shading. And I tried to keep my shading nice and smooth, overlapping lots of colours, really building up those different layers, trying to get lots of pigment down onto the paper before going in and blending with water. So that when I did blend with water, I'd have enough of the pencil on the paper to get a nice smooth blend. I made sure that I didn't press down too hard on the paper with these pencils, I just built it up in light layers. Because I don't have a lot of experience working with this supply in this way, I wanted to make sure that I was leaving myself room to tweak and change things if I wasn't happy with how it looked. So if you're new to a supply, I recommend starting off lightly and building up the intensity of your colours with multiple layers. Then once I'd got in a foundation of shading across the entire eye, I went in with a small round watercolour brush with just some clean water on it and I'm just blending out the entire eye. And I recommend that when you blend watercolour pencils that you do blend from light to dark to avoid muddying up your colours. And make sure to actually wash your brush and clean it off before blending out a completely new colour. But if you are interested, I recently did a video on a beginner's guide to watercolour pencils, so I'll leave that in a card up above if you want to check that out and get started yourself with this medium. Now, I could have probably gone in with a slightly larger brush to blend this out a little bit faster and also to avoid any patchiness and getting harsh edges. So you wanna make sure that you are using an appropriate size brush for the area that you are blending. If you use a brush that's too small, kind of like what I'm doing here, then you will get a bit more of a patchy result than if you use a bigger brush. But this size brush is really good if you want to blend out small areas like the pupil and the iris and the tear duct. But you could have switched to a larger brush to blend out the skin. Now whilst I waited for that base layer to dry, I decided to move on to the colour pencil study. And I'm basically just repeating the process that I did with the watercolour pencils when it comes to the shading. One tip that I have for you guys is that when you're using colour pencils, I find that it's actually easier to block in your darkest shading and darkest values first so that you kind of have an idea of what the darkest colour should be and it helps you judge all of the other values so that you have a nice balance and that you aren't just doing everything too light and not getting dark enough. Whereas if you work light to dark and you don't get in those dark value straight away, I find it hard to sort of judge what my darkest colour should be, how dark I should go with those mid-tones because I haven't got the darkest value in to compare it to. You've just got the white of the paper, so everything looks dark in comparison to the white of the paper. Once again, I'm using the same techniques, just building it up in layers, not using much pressure. And it does help if you actually use a paper, especially with watercolour pencils, that is designed to work with water. Because with the watercolour pencils, quite often you're going to blend and activate it with the water. So using something like a hot press watercolour paper would work well for that medium and even for coloured pencils. <laughs> 
Now to smooth out my colour pencil shading, instead of using water, I am using a colourless blender, this one is by Prismacolor, and it's just basically the binder of the pencil, it hasn't got any pigment in it, it's just that waxy binder that you can use to help fuse all of those other layers of colour pencil together to get a really smooth result. And this technique is called burnishing, where you apply a lot of pressure to your pencil in order to fuse and smooth out your colours. Now that we've got a base layer down for both of our eyes, let's go back in with our pencils and actually use them to add details to these drawings because the details are really going to help to give it that realistic result. Going back to the watercolour pencil study, you really want to use these pencils now just like you would with coloured pencils. So make sure the pencils are really sharp and as long as your previous layers of the watercolour pencils are now dry and you've waited for that base layer to dry, you should be able to go back in with your pencils just like you would, like I said, coloured pencils and use them to add all of those fine details and really define your drawing. You won't be adding any more water on top of this shading so you can use the pencils with a bit more pressure to actually blend into each other and get darker, more vibrant colours. One thing that surprised me when drawing this eye was how well the white watercolour pencil actually showed up on top of the darker colours. And so I used it to add highlights to the pupil, the iris, and I even used a white gel pen just to add a couple more sparkly highlights to the eye, for example, on the waterline. Moving on to the colour pencil eye, and once again, I repeat the same process, adding details, making sure that my pencils are super sharp, especially when it comes to drawing details like the eyelashes. You'll want to make sure that you've got your pencils as sharp as they can go for those really fine details. I will say that I was very surprised at the result I got with the watercolour pencils. I'm used to working with colour pencils, so I knew that I'd be able to get something nice and realistic quite easily with this medium, but with watercolour pencils, I wasn't sure how it would turn out. But as you can see, it was really easy to get a realistic look with watercolour pencils. And the results that I've got here are pretty much identical. If anything, I actually prefer the drawing I did with the watercolour pencils a little bit more, but they really are so similar. So you definitely can get a realistic result with watercolour pencils. But watercolour pencils aren't just great for realistic drawings. You'd be able to create loose, expressive, watercolour sort of paintings with them as well. So it's definitely a supply that I recommend trying out and having a go at. I really hope you enjoyed today's video. Remember to check out that free guide on how to pick perfect colours for your drawings. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye everybody.